guys, welcome back. I got a break. Let's continue. So I'm uploading the video. It's 11. Let's read the amphibious aircraft. Let's read this. I'll do my Danish video later. Not today, maybe. I only have two hours power on this camcorder, already spent 45 minutes power. And out oh, my back. It takes uh, 24 hours to charging this camcorder. Yes, I need a minute. I need a minute to do myself ready. Now I got pain in my back, so now it takes even longer time. Amphibious aircraft. A Canada CL215T amphibian with retractable U heels. An amphibious aircraft or amphibian is an aircraft that can take off and land on both solid ground and water. They are typically fixed wing. Thouf amphibious helicopters do exist as well. Fixed-wing amphibious aircraft are seaplanes, flying boats and float planes, which are equipped with retractable U heels, at the expense of extra weight and complexity plus diminished range and fuel economy compared to planes designed specifically for land-only or water-only operation. Some amphibians are fitted with three enforced keels which act as skis allowing them to land on snow or ice with their wheels up dot design. Float planes often have floats that are interchangeable with wheeled landing gear, thereby producing a conventional land-based aircraft. However, in cases where this is not practical, amphibious float planes such as the amphibious version of the DHC Otter incorporate retractable wheels within their floats. Many amphibian aircraft are of the flying boat type. These aircraft, and those designed as float planes with a single main float under the fuselage centerline, such as the Loning OL and Grumman J2F, require our trigger floats to provide lateral stability so as to avoid dipping a wingtip, which can destroy an aircraft if it happens at speed, or can cause the wingtip to fill with water and sink if stationary. While these impose U8 and drag, Amphibious aircraft also face the possibility of these getting hit when operating from air runway. A common solution is to make them retractable, like those found on the consolidated Catalina, however, these are even heavier than fixed floats. Some aircraft may have the tip floats removed for extended use from land. Other amphibians, such as the Dornier Seaster, use stub wings called sponsons mounted with their own lower surfaces nearly even with the ventral boat hull shaped fuselage surface dot this can provide the needed stability while float plane amphibians usually avoid the problem by dividing the buoyancy requirements between two floats much like a catamaran dot some non-amphibious seaplanes may be mistaken for amphibians such as the Shinmeiwa PS1 which carry their own beaching gear usually this is a wheel dolly or temporary set of wheels used to move a fleeing boat or float plane from the water and allow it to be moved around on land. It can also appear as a conventional undercarriage. These are not built to take the impact of the aircraft landing on them. An amphibian can leave the water without anyone getting in the water to attach beaching wheels, or even having to have any handy. Yet a fully functional undercarriage is heavy and impacts the aircraft's performance, and isn't required in all cases, so an aircraft may be designed to carry its own dot hazards. An occasional problem with amphibians is with ensuring the wheels are in the correct position for landing dot in normal operation. The pilot uses a checklist, verifying each item. Since amphibians can land with them up or down though, the pilot must take extra care to ensure they are correct for the chosen landing place. 
Landing wheels up on land may damage the keel, unless done on wet grass, a technique occasionally used by pilots of pure flying boats. While landing wheels down on water will almost always flip the aircraft upside down, causing substantial damage. Because Viking, an early amphibian. Usage Amphibious aircraft are heavier and slower, more complex and more expensive to purchase and operate than comparable land planes. However, they are also more versatile. Even though they cannot hover or land vertically, they compete favorably with helicopters for some jobs and can do so at a significantly lower cost. Amphibious aircraft can also be much faster and have a longer range than comparable helicopters, and can achieve nearly the range of land-based aircraft. 1. Because an airplane's wing is more efficient than a helicopter's lifting rotor. This makes amphibious aircraft, such as the Grumman Albatross and the Shin Meiwa US-2, useful for long-range air sea rescue tasks. <coughs> In addition, amphibious aircraft are particularly useful as bush planes that can engage in light transport in remote areas. In these areas, they often have to operate not only from airstrips, but from lakes and rivers as well. History In the United Kingdom, Traditionally a maritime nation, a large number of amphibians were built between th wars, starting from 1918 with the Vickers Viking and the early 1920s Supermarine Seagull and were used for exploration and military duties including search and rescue, artillery spotting and anti-submarine air patrol. The most notable being the short Sunderland which carried out many anti-submarine patrols over the North Atlantic on sorties of 8-12 hours duration. These evolved throughout the interwar period to ultimately culminate in the post-World War II Supermarine Seagull, which was to have replaced the wartime Walrus and the Sea Otter but was overtaken by advances in helicopters. Replica of a Sysarch a Sikorsky S-38 used to explore Africa in the 1930s. Starting in the mid-1920s and running into the late 1930s in the United States, Sikorsky produced an extensive family of amphibians. The S-34, S-36, S-38, S-39, S-41, S-43, that were widely used for Exploration and as airliners around the globe helping pioneer many overseas air routes where the larger flying boats could not go, and helping to popularize amphibians in the US. The Grumman Corporation, late comers to the game, introduced a pair of light utility amphibious aircraft, the Goose and the Widgeon during the late 1930s for the civilian market. However, their military potential could not be ignored, and many were ordered by the U.S. armed forces and their allies during World War II. Not coincidentally, the consolidated Catalina, named for Santa Catalina Island off the coast of Southern California whose resort was partially popularized by the use of amphibians in the 1930s, including Sykeskis and Douglas Dolphins was redeveloped from being a pure flying boat into an amphibian during the war. After the war, the United States military ordered hundreds of the Grumman Albatross and its variants for a variety of roles, though, like the pure flying boat was made obsolete by helicopters which could operate in sea conditions far beyond what the best seaplane could manage. Development of amphibians was not limited to the United Kingdom and the United States. In any case, few designs saw more than limited service, as there was a widespread preference for pure flying boats and float planes, due to the weight penalty the undercarriage imposed. Russia also developed a number of Italian Air Force PIOP.136 during takeoff retracting the wheels part make it an amphibian. Important flying boats including the widely used pre-war Shavrovsha 2 utility flying boat, and post-war the Berev B-12 anti-submarine and maritime patrol amphibian. Development of amphibians continues in Russia with the jet-engined Berev B-200. Italy, bordering the Mediterranean and Adriatic has had a long history of waterborne aircraft going back to the first Italian aircraft to fly. While most were not amphibians, 
quite a few were, including Savoy Marchetti S.56 and the Pugio P.136. Amphibious aircraft were particularly useful in the unforgiving terrain of Alaska and northern Canada, where many remain in civilian service, providing remote communities with vital links to the outside world. The Canadian Vickers Vidette was developed for forestry patrol in remote areas previously a job that was done by canoe and took weeks could be accomplished in hours, revolutionizing forestry conservation. Although successful, flying boat amphibians like it ultimately proved less versatile than float plane amphibians and are no longer as common as they once were. Amphibious floats that could be attached to any aircraft were developed turning any aircraft into an amphibian, and these continue to be essential for getting into the more remote locations during the summer months when the only open areas are Reef Waterways. Shinmeiwa US-2, developed in the 2000s in Japan from the older Shinmeiwa US-1A despite the gains of amphibious floats, small flying boat amphibians continued to be developed into the 1960s with the Republic CB and Lake LA-4 series proving popular, though neither was a commercial success due to factors beyond their maker's control. Many today are home built by necessity as the demand is too small to justify the costs of development, with the Vomer Sportsman being a popular choice amongst the main offerings. With the increased availability of airstrips in remote communities fewer amphibious aircraft are manufactured today than in the past although a handful of amphibious aircraft are still produced, such as Bombardier 415, Icona 5 and the amphibious float-equipped version of the Cessna Caravan. Development of amphibians has continued into the new millennium. The Shinmeiwa US-2 was developed in the 2000s in Japan for the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. See also Amphibious helicopter Amphibious vehicle List of flying boats and float planes Float plane Flying boat Seaplane Tigerfish aviation Retractable float Unmanned aerial vehicle References Good Let's stop the video